So you just got your new Battle Tom and a new Start Collecting box. Where to go now? Well, my name is the Worker of Well, and in today's video, I'm going to be going over the top three best heroes for each Grand Alliance Order faction. This video is designed to give new players a little bit of directive of what to purchase next. I will be talking about my picks for the three best heroes of each Order faction, and they should be in your list of things to get once you start your army. Without further ado, let's get started. First up on the list is Cities of Sigmar. Cities of Sigmar has an overabundance of choices, and I think that the three that I've picked out here are a great first start for any Cities of Sigmar player. Battle mages are fantastically flexible, giving you a wide variety of spells to choose from based off of whatever mortal realm you want your mage to come from. And they are fairly cheap in game, so you can always bring at least one, but most armies I think bring two or three. Celestial Hurricaneum is another great pick. The aura buff for your nearby units is fantastic, and it's a great centerpiece model that you can have at the center of your formations. Lastly, Anointed on Phoenix is another great pickup, mostly for the Frostfire debuff that you can give to nearby enemies, but the Fire Phoenix can also work if you want a little bit more mortal wound damage. The only concern I have with the Anointed on Phoenix is that Cities of Sigmar tends to specialize within one or more of the old world races, so to speak. So a lot of Cities armies are going to be focused on High Elves, Old Dark Elves, um, Wood Elves, etc. And so if your army isn't focused on High Elves, then you might lose a little bit of value there. But the general purpose debuff is very valuable. Next up is Daughters of Cain. Now Daughters of Cain has a few wonderful heroes, and in fact a good portion of their power comes from the heroes and the various buffs they can give. My first pick is the Cauldron of Blood. I personally prefer the Slaughter Queen over the Hag Queen, but they're fairly interchangeable and they're incredibly easy to magnetize so you can flip the War Scroll in whatever way you'd like. Next is Marathi. Marathi is a fantastic pickup and incredibly powerful. Her command ability for hero phase shooting is what makes Daughters of Cain fairly scary. She's also just a very good beat stick that can take a long time to kill because of her ingrown only taking three wounds a turn ability. Last, I have a bit of a duo pick. I would pick up either the High uh, Gladiatrix from the latest Arena of Shadows box or the Malusi Iron Scale. Now, I'd say this is a dual pick because the buffs they provide to the respective battle line or troop units is incredibly powerful. So if you are pushing your army more towards the Sisters of uh, Slaughter and the Witch Elves, go with the High Gladi uh, Gladiatrix. But if you prefer snakes for your in infantry, go the Malusi Iron Scale. Either more damage or more mobility. Either one is a fantastic pickup. Next up is the Fire Slayers book. They are still relatively new and so the meta around their heroes is currently solidifying, but these are my three picks. The bat or excuse me, the Rune Sun and Magmadroth is the cheapest Magmadroth, and I think that having that access to a cheap monster unit is very valuable. And he can dish out a whole bunch of damage if you want him to. Then we have the Battlesmith for some defensive wards around him, which is very useful for your two wound infantry. And finally, we have a Rune Father. I've heard Rune Fathers can really, really crank out the damage and tank a lot of hits. So these are my three picks for Fire Slayers. Similar to the Fire Slayers, the IDK book has just been released, and so the meta around their heroes is currently solidifying. But as of right now, these are my three picks for some good first points for heroes. Volturnus provides a whole lot of great abilities. Either Eidolon can work as they both of their War Scrolls provide some good things to your army. I think the melee version of the uh, Eidolon just ekes out the mage one, but that's a personal preference, honestly. And then lastly, the Tidecaster. 
Before I move on to the other half of the Grand Alliance Order Army, I would like to give a thanks to our Patreon supporters. You guys are amazing, and an extra special thanks to Nick Hoff. If you'd like to become a Patreon member, there is going to be a link in the description below. And additionally, there is a link to the Discord in the description below if you'd like to come and hang out with the rest of the community. For Caradron Overlords, we have the Admiral, Chemist, and Endron Master with Suit. Now, for the Admiral, his reason for being on this list is the vast array of command abilities that he gives you access to, and the overall good buff piece he is. Then we have the Aether Chemist. His damage rerolling uh, wound rolls of one is fantastic. Just be aware that you can't use that ability while he is a part of a garrison, so he, if he is on a ship, or he cannot use it on garrisoned units, so you can't target something in a ship. But still, fantastic buff ability. And then the Endred Master with Suit lets you heal three flat wounds to your various uh, boats, which is a fantastic ability to help keep them alive just a little bit longer. For Lumineth Realm Lords, I've picked Teclis, Severith, and the Cathalar. Teclis and the Cathalar are a fairly standard staple in most Lumineth Realm Lords lists, and Severith is there because he can dish out a whole lot of damage and gives you a lot of movement flexibility to really get a lot of board control. And that's something that certain Lumineth Realm Lords lists can lack because they fairly play static and in castles. But with the speed of Severith, you can reach out to far-flung objectives and dish out some damage while you're doing it. For Seraphon, we have Lord Croak, the Skink Oracle, and the Skink Star Priest. Seraphon is all about magic and extending their buffs and range of their magic, so having the combo of Croak and a Skink Oracle is fantastic. And then the Skink Star Priest with the Serpent Staff really, really ups your damage. Mortal Wounds on sixes in addition to various units around your army can definitely turn the tide of battle. Next is Stormcast Eternals, and with their litany of hero options, it is a little difficult to pick out just three, but these three I think are the best overall choices. First up is the Lord Imperitant, just recently released in the Dominion box. His ability to let one unit per turn deep strike seven inches away instead of nine is so, so critical for certain Stormcast strategies and uh, various units, such as the Annihilators. Then we have the Lord Castellant, a flexible choice that can either provide some buff or do some damage. And lastly, the Lord Relic, Relic Door. Excuse me. He is a great priest with various uh, prayers and giving you access to the great prayer book for Stormcast Eternals. Lastly is Sylvaneth. Sylvaneth have access to a wide a range of wonderful heroes, but these three, I think, are the ones that stand out the most to me. The Warsong Revenant's ability for magical flexibility with knowing the whole spellbook and having some good cast bonuses is very valuable. Then the Branch Wraith is almost always an auto-include, so you can keep summoning Dryads and continue having units to hold the line or reactively put them where you need them via your uh, Wildwood teleportation. And then lastly, Alariel is another fantastic magical piece that you can use in melee and with her recent War Scroll updates, she has a ton of flexibility, being able to retreat and shoot or charge. And that was the top three best heroes in each Grand Alliance Order faction. If you liked the video, please leave a like or a comment. And if you want to see more type of this type of content in the future, please consider subscribing. This has been the work of a row, and I'll see you guys next time.